as LeBron James' iconic career comes to an end, he might not go out lightly, all right? LeBron James is set to be a free agent this summer with the player option that we all believe he will be exercising. And as the Cleveland Cavaliers are on the edge of their seats in regards to will they be able to retain their top tier free agent this time around, LeBron James has a decision to make. Do you stay in Cleveland or do you take your talents elsewhere? Maybe not South Beach this time, but elsewhere. I'm going to give you 10 reasons why LeBron James should leave Cleveland, Ohio for good. It sucks to live in Cleveland. That's reason number one. With all due respect to Cleveland, Ohio, no one dreams about living in Cleveland. LeBron made Cleveland cool. One of the biggest reasons LeBron left Cleveland the first time around was because he got frustrated with his inability to convince free agents to come and play with him in Cleveland. Reportedly, the reason LeBron ended up in Miami was because his initial attempt to convince fellow free agent Chris Bosh to come to Cleveland failed. And Bosh would only be willing to play in a city outside of Cleveland. I think Cleveland needs to humble themselves. Do you remember all the burning LeBron James jerseys like Cleveland is popping? Y'all forgot LeBron has reportedly brought over a billion dollars to the Cleveland and surrounding areas economy. Let's make it clear. You need LeBron. LeBron doesn't need you. The second reason, his family doesn't want to be there. In a 2017 interview, remember when LeBron James during All-Star Weekend in New Orleans went to that barber shop and Draymond Green and 2 Chains and company were there and they had that big old conversation? In that interview, for the first time, LeBron opened up about his family actually not supporting his decision to return back home to Ohio. For me, when I decided to go back and I talked to Mav and Rich and Randy and everybody, I had to let them know some people were on the fence. Even my wife was like, my mama and my wife was like, fuck that. I ain't with that. My mom was definitely like, fuck that. We ain't going back. LeBron told the group. For me, it was more I had to finally be like, you know what, mom? It ain't really about that. Me going back is more of a bigger picture and more about all these kids, all these people who needed inspiration and needed a way to get out. And I believe... I am the way out. So as much as my mom means everything to me and as much as my wife means everything to me and my kids, my mom was like, you go back. I ain't going back with you. She was like, I'm staying in Miami. I had to be like, let's not worry about the small shit and let's worry about building something that's bigger than our name, he explained. Now, obviously no one in their right mind will pick to live in Cleveland over South Beach, but it's deeper than that. LeBron wife Savannah has a juice bar in Miami. That's why she didn't want to leave. His kids had got accustomed to their new schools after a four-year transition, but there was more than that. A real reason why Braun's wife and his mama didn't want uh, a Cavs reunion. Reason number three, the Cavs owner Dan Gilbert doesn't deserve him. Do you remember the Cavs owner letter to LeBron after his televised decision to leave Cleveland? Dear Cleveland, all of Northeast Ohio and Cleveland Cavaliers supporters, wherever you might be tonight, as you now know, our former hero, who grew up in the very region that he deserted this evening is no longer a Cleveland Cavalier. This was announced with a several day narcissistic self-promotional buildup culminating with a national TV special of his decision. Unlike anything ever witnessed in the history of sports and probably the history of entertainment, clearly this is bitterly disappointing to all of us. The good news is that the ownership team and the rest of the hardworking, loyal, and driven staff over here at your hometown Cavaliers have not betrayed you, nor never will betray you. There is so much more to tell you about the events of the recent past and our more than exciting future. Over the next several days and weeks, we will be communicating much of that to you. You simply don't deserve this kind of cowardly betrayal. You have given so much and deserve so much more. In the meantime, I want to make one statement to Cleveland tonight. I personally guarantee that the Cleveland Cavaliers will win an NBA championship before the self-titled former King wins one. This shocking act of disloyalty from our homegrown chosen one sends the exact opposite lesson of what we would want our children to learn and who we would want them to grow up to become. But the good news is that the heartless and callous action can only serve as the antidote to this so-called curse on Cleveland, Ohio. The self-declared former king will be taking the curse with him down south and until he does right by Cleveland, Ohio, James and the town where he plays 
will unfortunately own this dreaded spell and bad karma. Just watch. Sleep well, Cleveland. Well, Dan Gilbert, you didn't deliver on your promise. LeBron won two championships with the Heat and then came back and took care of your dirty work. LeBron and his family had every right to never return to that organization after he dedicated the first seven years of his career, averaging over 27, seven and seven, to a lottery bound franchise. Without LeBron, translation, the Cavs are nothing. Reason number four, this roster is old and not good. Look around this team. Without LeBron, they're just simply not good. If LeBron leaves the court for a couple minutes, the team is usually negative in the plus minus department. The ball doesn't move. The effort is not there. Channing Fry and Cal Corver can only shoot. Shumpert is not good at anything. Derrick Rose doesn't know if he wants to play basketball or not. Isaiah Thomas is not 100%. Dwayne Wade can't give it everything he got night in and night out. Smith is not the player he used to be offensively. Tristan Thompson can only give you a basket at the rim. He can't give you a basket in the post. Speaking of J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson, that brings me to reason number five. LeBron got his boys paid and the Cavs are stuck financially. The talent is washed up. So this actually is kind of LeBron's fault. LeBron has a very close friend, Rich Paul, who's also his agent. Well, Paul sort of creates a conflict of interest for LeBron. Paul represents a number of players around the association, including Ben Simmons, but now he represents Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith. To help grow his close friend's brand, it's in James' best interest to help his friends brand grow to help grow the empire, right? Two consecutive summers, LeBron came out to make statements to the Cavs that I need you to pay Thompson and I need you to pay J.R. Smith. Here's the facts. No one outside of the Cavs will give Tristan Thompson a five-year, $80 million deal. His best attribute is rebounding. Also, no one else made an offer to J.R. Smith. You can quote me on that. Meaning the Cavs gave him $15 million a year for nothing. No other team believed he would actually leave Cleveland and plan with LeBron James. If the Cavs give Isaiah a max contract, with Kevin Love still on the contract, and the contract to Smith and Thompson, and by the way, when they were negotiating J.R. Smith's contract, yes, they were negotiating against themselves. They really can't do much else. LeBron could just moonwalk away from this mess that he kind of helped create. And here's the next reason. His friends are finally free. LeBron has always been vocal about one day into his career with his closest friends, aka the Banana Boat crew, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul. For the first time in all their careers, they all have the possibilities of being free agents together. Carmelo has a player option. Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul will both be free agents. They theoretically could all find a team that has a cap room to sign all four of these guys who probably will be willing to take a pay cut in order to play together. This could lure LeBron to leave Cleveland. Reason number seven. And to me, this is a very small factor to one of the most five popular people in the world. Maybe LeBron wants to transition more and to become a mogul. Maybe more acting and helping getting his production company off the ground. He does have a home in California. Maybe he wants to end his career as a Laker. Like I said, this is a very small factor. I don't think LeBron loves the idea of playing with a bunch of young guys and hearing LeVar Ball's mouth in Los Angeles. Also, with social media, do you really need to live in a certain city for opportunities? He's LeBron. Also, if he comes to Los Angeles and plays in a city where the standard has been set so high in the past thanks to President Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaq, and Kobe, and LeBron doesn't win, I think that will kind of hurt his legacy. Speaking of his legacy, reason number eight is very important to LeBron. His finals record. Braun has admitted he's chasing the legacy of Michael Jordan. Well, MJ was 6-0 in the finals and LeBron has already lost five times. So he already can't compete with perfection, but I'm sure LeBron is aware that if he stays in the Eastern Conference because of his greatness, he's likely to continue to make the NBA Finals in a weaker East. The problem with that is that you're consistently matching up with a super talented Golden State team unless something changes. You can't afford for the finals record to end up being three and nine, that's definitely gonna scar his legacy. Reason number nine, and one way LeBron could find a way to compete with Golden State is by finally getting to a team with a really good coach. No disrespect to Paul Silas, Mike Brown, Eric Spolstra, David Black, or Tyron Lue. 
I don't think any of these guys, especially Tyron Lue, are considered great coaches. LeBron has never had the iconic coach like Magic had Pat Riley or MJ Shaq and Kobe had Phil Jackson. Maybe this opens the door for LeBron to play for a Greg Popovich in San Antonio or unite with current ESPN broadcaster Mark Jackson with a different team. And the last reason, and, and probably the most important reason of them all, it's time for LeBron to enjoy his life. He's always going to be the number one guy in Cleveland, which will always have unreasonable expectations for a city outside of him have never pretty much won anything. It's time for him to go to another team and finally be a number two option and enjoy the fruits of his labor. I mean, Michael Jordan was definitely doing that at this point. A lot of people close to Michael Jordan say he was always enjoying the fruits of his labor, a la gambling, cigar smoking, and other teams. We've never seen someone dedicate his life to the game of basketball from every aspect. The commitment to basketball, you just don't make it to 15 years in the league, still averaging 27, nine and eight. That takes a crap ton of discipline. And while most of his peers were enjoying the club life with all their riches, LeBron was taking care of his body, ignoring the temptations from the clubs, not drinking every night, taking care of himself. Arguably the biggest kryptonite to his career is that the injuries to everyone else has hurt his legacy. When he left Miami, Dwayne Wade was on his last legs. And one reason why they lost to San Antonio that last time around was because Dwayne Wade wasn't the old Dwayne Wade. And LeBron thought he was going to get the old Dwayne Wade when he signed up for Miami. He didn't have Kyrie and Kevin Love during the 2015 NBA Finals versus Golden State. His kids are getting older. His oldest son is really good in basketball and will be heavily recruited by big schools. Maybe LeBron wants to focus on that more than winning another championship. And you know it's got to take a certain level of commitment to be focused on winning championships. If he plays on a team with less expectations, they likely won't play on every holiday or make it to the finals, which means his seasons would end earlier. Maybe Brian is tired of being the guy in the limelight. It's his decision at the end of the day. No matter what LeBron does, and I could argue that that's got to be one of the toughest things in your life to think about, right? You've worked this hard to get to this point and have your body still hold up in year 15, year 16, and you know you can still play at an elite level, but you didn't realize you'd hold up this long, and now you got kids growing up about to hit high school, and now you're like, do I even continue playing? And with my one life to live, maximize my greatness, continue to play for the Cavs and compete for championships or go to another team and compete for championships at an elite level? Or do I just sit back and realize I've given the game so much? Is it time to worry about my kids, my family that have had to make sacrifices just like me in order to put up with me being on the road 75 to 85% of the year? That's got to be a tough one, and I'm actually happy that I don't have to make that decision. I'm going to leave that one up to King James. Regardless, LeBron probably should leave Cleveland. Now, whether he does that or not, that's up to him. But there's more than enough reason for LeBron James to say, I brought Charlotte Championship by Cleveland. I'm out.